Hey everybody, I am Tim Burnett and this is the Solo Hunter Podcast. We're all about hunting good, eating good, and downright rugged individualism. This is podcast episode number 10, Little Brother Boyd. You gotta have a story. Oh, forget the story. Everybody's doing something. We'll do nothing. They say, what's your show about? I say nothing. There you go. It's about nothing. I think you may have something here. Before we jump into this podcast, I want to, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to get this out this week and and not hold it for another week or two is I wanted to talk a little bit briefly about the new film that I just released with my partners on X Hunt. Um, just a just a kind of an episode format. It's a film that I titled Public Land Ranch, and it's really just kind of a history relog, I guess, of video footage and hunts that I've that I've done over the years since Solo Hunter started. And it's all, you know, basically about my passion and um, drive and commitment for conservation and management and basically just promoting and pushing public lands staying in the in the control of the of the people and not being turned over to the states and basically just how I cherish and appreciate public land hunting and and have done for years and will continue to do so for years so it was really just you know our collaboration and partnership with Onyx Hunt and Onyx Maps to um, you know, originally produce an episode that featured some of their products and that kind of thing. And I just decided that I wanted to turn it into more, a little bit more of a special interest piece than just an episode and another hunt and another kill. So in this film, I kind of feature a little, a little bit of, of some of my elk hunts this year, um, and kind of leave a little bit of a cliffhanger there. But I also just kind of recap a lot of my entire career of filming and hunting on public land. So if you guys want to check it out, that'd be great. I really appreciate it. Onyx is going to release that on their YouTube channel and social media and everything on Monday, which is Monday the 13th. So that's the day that I'm hoping that this podcast will go live. This might be Tuesday or Wednesday before iTunes gets it up. But uh, really... Um, encourage you and ask you if you'd go check that out not for the sake of me thinking that the film is just that awesome and that good but it's really more about the message of conservation and management and um, the drive to continue to keep public lands in the public's hands so if you would check it out on onyx's youtube channel it's just onyx hunt or youtube.com slash hunting gps maps i think uh, we'll also have it on the solo hunter youtube page and and social media and that kind of thing but really want to show them the support that they've shown me in return and i know we were we were you know the intentions were to keep sponsors and everything out of this podcast and that but with the release of this film onyx has, has been awesome they really wanted to give something to our listeners and to our viewers and so they've given us a promo code to use on any of their products that gives you an additional 20 percent off so if you use promo code solo whether you're getting the elite membership that gives you access to maps throughout the entire United States, all 50 states, or just a chip or any of those other things through through Onyx Hunt, you'll be able to get a 20% discount on that if you use the promo code SOLO. So that's kind of their gift to you guys as showing their appreciation to your continued support for Solo Hunter, but also for the support of this film and the message that we want to get out as much as we can, you know, and it's kind of, kind of one of those buzzwords right now is, is public land hunting. And, and I've got a few people asking me what the heck is the public land ranch and, uh, you're all, you're living in it, man. I mean, those of you that hunt the public lands, you know what it is and you know, and appreciate what we're trying to do to, to keep it in our hands. So if you'll check out that film, that's just my shameless little plug to get that going. And then now into this podcast, just a cool conversation that I had with my little brother Boyd on a hunt that we just finished last week or the week before on his elk hunt. And uh, we got one of our childhood buddies, Seth Larson, jumped in the conversation. So nothing really more to say about that, but I think you guys are going to enjoy it and get a little insight into kind of our history and what we started in, how we started bow hunting and kind of some things that make make us tick. So really appreciate everything and hope you enjoy this podcast. Is it bad that I just burped? Check, 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 check. I'm pretty sure that's working. Ah, uh, it's gonna work. All right. Let's All right, get rolling, because it's cold. It's uh, getting nastier. What, are you being wimpy? I am a wimp. I will only do this podcast if you promise that you won't ask me how many bullets truly <laughs> flew out of the end of that gun. <laughs> I don't think I ever got the straight answer of how many bullets actually flew out of the I told of that you. rifle. I told you it was somewhere between three and 10. 
Well, I saw his little case, <laughs> and there were 10 in there when it started, and I think there's only one or two left. No, there's more than two. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing I brought you a couple more boxes of shells. <laughs> I shot the one round because I didn't think Tim and Jeremiah could tell where I was at because it looked like they were going over the wrong way. So I popped a shot into the hillside, and then they get up there, and they're like, what are you doing? We saw you like four hours ago. Huh. Oh, when they were coming up the mountain? <laughs> yeah. Because I, I kept looking down by my truck because I could see it line of sight, and I kept expecting to see your truck or Tim's, and I never did see it. Well, I pulled right up there underneath your truck and glassed you up. I saw you immediately, and I figured you would have seen me. No, I, I was busy working, I guess, but I thought I kept looking, and I never did see you. That's why when you guys came over the ridge, I thought, oh, if they know where I'm at, they'd go down in the bottom and right up the bottom. But you guys kept going towards the truck. I was like, crap, I don't think they see me. Well, I'll tell that part of the story right now since we jumped right into the thick of it. <laughs> we're, we're sitting there. Jeremiah wanted to keep glassing for deer. I'm like, we just got to get up there. We don't have time to dink around looking for deer. He's like, oh, let me just go over this ridge. So we went up to that saddle that Boyd's talking about, which is. And, and from my point of view, it looked like they were going into a cliff. They were gonna we get, were they going into a cliff. That's me. why I don't know why he wanted to go look for deer up there. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? As paranoid as Boyd is, I would bet money that within minutes, he's out in the middle of that sagebrush flat waving his orange <laughs> vest around <laughs> and hooting and hollering. And it wasn't 30 seconds, and we hear this, boom, the good <laughs> shot goes off. And then the thing starts waving. He's waving his orange <laughs> vest. I'm like, yeah, it's, that's Boyd, Mr. Paranoia, thinking we didn't see him. When, when you saw the orange, did you think, oh, that must be an out-of-stater? <laughs> well, I seen it right from the very bottom, and I was like, hey, there's somebody stuck an orange thing, which I saw you earlier when I drove up the canyon. But. Seth was thinking I was a bad person because every time I saw orange, I, I said that they must be out-of-staters. Yeah. But I had orange in my backpack. Yeah, not too, of our lo not too many of our locals, they, they don't wear the orange. How does it? It don't matter if you don't have to, right? Yeah, we refer to them as eight beers, two jeers, one beers. <laughs> oh, I, my personal two favorite are the two one effers. The, the effers. The, the one effers. <laughs> the one effers. Yeah, when I was driving up the canyon, the, the uh, eight beers were coming out, and they I had to pull off the road, and they were pulling up, and they asked what I was doing. I said, oh, my brother killed an elk up there, and they're going, oh, that's what all that shooting was. <laughs> and so right then I knew that it – there must have been some shooting. It going. must have been Boyd because there was a lot. They there probably figured there were two or three people up there shooting. <laughs> well, we joked all week about how Boyd tends to give them a few warning shots. Only we were just saying a, a few. <coughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how much longer this right here is going to last with this rain coming in now all of a sudden. Yeah, should we, should I'm we, thinking we're you're. We have to move this into the cabin. Yeah, I think we better. Let's well, do it. We'll move it into the cabin. If you guys can grab the cameras and I'll grab this. Okay. Just hit the record button. Ready? Stop. Nope, on the on the front right. Here you. Okay, Seth, give me a sound check. Check one, two, three. Breaker, breaker. Horse raper. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> we'll steal their women and rape their horses. <laughs> yep. Okay, but the audio in your ears is it loud enough? Yeah, I can hear good. Okay, because it's doing good there. Can you hear me, Tim? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I just got to push record. I got to turn it because I'm. I got to check video and audio here. I need a. I need a producer. You do know you have a couple rednecks over here that are having fun with this. <laughs> this is the first time we've ever had mics on. Boyd's had a mic on before. Oh, okay. Not, not that like so he's this. A, he's a seasoned veteran then. Yeah, that's why that podcast didn't go to air. <laughs> it still could, but I just didn't want to mess with all the audio on it. <laughs> Whatever. It's it's just like when we got the family pictures last week, and Angie said, oh, this picture would be perfect if it wasn't for your face. <laughs> <laughs> if we could just edit you, right? you got to preface that with which photo you sent me, too. To oh, yeah, because she liked the bulging vein in my forehead. <laughs> So you, weren't, told, you weren't upset at any time, were you? So I might have sent Tim a picture of a Klingon. <laughs> said this is what my wife envisions me as. Uh, nice. Might have. Might have. I think you did. I think I think it's probably a good thing that people don't see our string of texts. <laughs> because I get I get <laughs> I get nervous when I'm driving and I have Angie send somebody a text because then she starts going through my text. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm worried about anything I said about her. Of course not. I just ha I just make it a habit that when Boyd and I start texting, I just make sure and delete everything, delete the proof. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You're too mean. Uh, I guess. No, it's just a good thing. 
Well, I, while we're talking about text, I will preface it all to say that on my contacts, all the names in my phone, I have A Seth and A Tim, so that you two are at the top of the list. Just so you know. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, we yeah. feel special now. Thank you, Boyd. <laughs> but Angie, met Angie still in front of you, but still, I had to. A and yeah, I think you taught me how to do that. So I did, I'm. So Kelly. you're saying I'm second since I'm A Seth and he's A Tim. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, man. That's how blood before b- bros. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so I'll I'll introduce who's sitting here. Just I don't usually do that in a podcast. We just talk because normally it's just <laughs> who it usually, is who it is. Usually, you, usually you're talking to people that are worth, you, worth some. Usually, all six times that I've done my own podcast before, I do oh. it. No, we got Seth here. So Seth Boyd, why don't you tell everybody who Seth is? Seth, tell me who Seth is. Seth is me brother. Seth's my brother. It's too bad we didn't get Aaron here the other day. Yeah. That would have been pretty cool. I think I think growing up, Seth was either at our house or I was at Seth's house in the summer. Yeah. Pretty much all summer long, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and, and we did it on our pedal bikes. <laughs> <laughs> pedal bikes. Or, like or on horseback. Horseback's what I remember. Yeah, so. horseback. And the psycho llama that would chase the horses. Oh, yeah, over there at the sheep farm. Oh. We had to ride all the way around that place so the horses didn't run. And what sheep? Times. Oh, uh, those Pursers? Rambolades. Yeah. No, the those Rambolades. Rambolades, those big horn twisted things. Oh, yeah. What was his name? I don't remember his name. I just remember he had the cursed llama that would attack. Yep. And oh, Seth's, guys, Seth's horse was particularly prone to, <laughs> to fear. <laughs> he was very flighty, especially when llamas come chasing him down the fence. <laughs> That's probably why I still could never picture you when you told me that that was a good kid's horse. Oh, man. You know, my sister's. After I went on my mission, my sister's kid rode that. She was two and started riding that still until it died For last real. year. Hmm. 32 years old, that thing. Skywalker. So, yeah. Luke, <laughs> I'm your father. No, the horse's name was Skywalker. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. I don't think I ever rode my bike or I had a motorcycle or the car that I drove across there. Yeah, because you had the cool big motorcycle that Boyd and I yeah. couldn't even push that kick start on it wasn't to- mine it was troy i stole it from troy i totally forgot about riding my bike that uh, it had to have been five miles wasn't it four miles over to my house yeah uh, i don't think it was that far was it's it? a long it way was it's farther than you think it's probably more than halfway miles. across the valley probably three miles it wasn't nearly as far as i've been hiking this week <clears throat> yeah yeah so we that's that's kind of what this podcast is about is talking about the hunt this week that we did this has been this has been one of my favorite hunts in, in a long time. Oh, this this has to be one of my favorite weeks ever. Seth and I have been talking about putting in for elk here home together on a group hunt for every year since I've moved to Montana. And they finally, we finally did put in on a group tag, and my wife says, "What are you doing that for? You're not gonna, we're not gonna spend that money on that out of state tag." I was like, "We're not gonna draw." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Seth, that's how that's how you know how you rate is he put in on the group hunt with you and not me. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I may have never yeah. put in. With <laughs> there were there was a month span there where I didn't answer my phone. Actually, actually that to be after co- he drew after or? he drew because I didn't he did of course he's not gonna tell me he put in with you before. Well, pretty pretty much because he mean, didn't want he didn't think they were gonna draw, so he didn't want it to get out that you were he liked you better than me <laughs> no i i truly think that i'm a greedy bugger because i that's the first time i've ever put in on a group hunt on anything <laughs> i remember putting in with benji one time but other than that i haven't no no i'm, I'm a greedy bugger I i've be... tried the group hunt with my kids and aaron aaron our bro- my brother and he's aaron's my age my best friend growing up you know boyd and seth ran together and jared kind of fell in there in between with jeremiah but those two were both nerds, and so we we excluded both of those two pretty uh, much. <laughs> I think half the time Seth and Jeremiah were doing stuff. It, we, our, yeah. our families were basically family. Yep. Uh, yep. We were doing a lot of stuff together. That was, and those were good times. As good as they, as good as a person could ever wish for, right? Yeah. Well, that that's why this week was so awesome for me to be able to go around in the mountains we grew up in, where we grew up hiking in sweatpants and basketball shoes, and yeah, good memories. People don't get that one. I've, I've done that, that same voiceover narration. I've used that same line a couple of times in my videos, and I'll get some messages. What's the thing with basketball shoes? <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
We, when when did you get your first pair of boots? I don't think we were talking about this the other day. I got my first pair of boots, I think, after my mission. I think uh, I see, was I, 20 years old when I got I remember them. saving up and everybody telling me I was an idiot for spending 160 bucks or something for a pair of boots. $79 or something on the first pair of boots I bought. The whatever. first ones I bought were those Mendel, Cabela's Mendel, whatever they are. I didn't even buy that first pair. Alan felt so dang sorry for me. He's like, dude. Oh yeah, I remember you being. Some boots. Your Danners were my envy. <laughs> yeah, those he gave me a pair of his old boots, and I wore those for, I I wore those until, oh, I was I, out of high school. I wore my first pair of Mendels at, at least twelve years, at least that oh, long. It, oh yeah, forever. Because it's like, oh, I finally got something that actually has support, and that the rocks don't poke you through the bottom. Oh, yeah. And they're waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, the that, thing with the basketball shoes, what that was, was we would play basketball in high school and so you'd have to get gym shoes for the the court you know so you'd have to get buy basketball shoes so you'd get converse or nikes or whatever it was it was always converse when i was there that was the big thing and it was kind of cool to see the new style of shoe that came out because all the high school kids would get a pick which which pair they want and then after basketball was over those would become your school shoes you know and so and then the next hunting season, and then the next hunting hunting season those are your hunting shoes and then you're in that you're in that cycle so your hunting shoes never fit you they were and always your toes too small were flopping out <laughs> yeah <laughs> so well I, that very first year you filmed when we went back into the unnamed place with on horses we have how old are video you foot we have video footage and i'm wearing nikes yeah and i have my chili hat that i got i can't so that was in 2000 I cannot find that. I, I know I've got it digitized somewhere, but I know I've got the tape. I found the tape, but I can't find a player to play the tape so that I can digitize it again. Because it's on one of my many hard drives. I was doing the math. I think I'm getting close to 100, 100 gigabyte, or excuse me, 100 terabytes of footage since I started. I'm getting really <laughs> close. After this season, it'll be right at 100. That, that just made me think we were at work. They were la they were talking about how we had to reduce file size because we're up to like. 15 terabytes in our oh, our yeah. group or something and one of the co-workers like well i can go to walmart and get you <laughs> <laughs> you can <laughs> buy a four terabyte hard drive for a 100 bucks anyway sorry but that was a good trip that was the that was probably the first time we really started filming because that's when i bought that it camera was. i finally got a job and bought a and sony high eight camera and that's why it's so cool this week because that was also the last year because we grew up with horses constantly. That's all we used, and mm -hmm. that was the last hunt we did because we packed that bull out on the horses. Mm -hmm. And this is the first bull since then that I packed out on the horses. Yeah, I packed a few out on my back, but I haven't packed any on the horse. No, it's, you that, felt like a horse is what you're saying. No, nah, it was <laughs> smelled like a horse. No, nah, I say that all that's why this Boy, week was. was smelling was, like a horse this whole week. Mm -hmm. I smell like a stinky, rutting antelope. <laughs> <laughs> Farting horse will never tire. Farting man will never is the one to hire. Something like that. Is that what they say? <laughs> that just means you're eating good. I haven't heard that one. So this trip, boy, boy, you two drew that uh, limited draw bull tag in this area, which is where we grew up, which is kind of cool to be able to always come back right where we grew up and, and hunt. Well, so Boyd, behind my back on the sly, put in when a group hunt with Seth. Maybe it was your idea, Seth. Was it your idea? Oh, we – Talk. I don't remember. We talk about it every year. We just finally did it. My wife always my wife always laughs at me because I text Boyd more than I text her. And so Well that's what that see, that's what's funny is that I I think that's the only reason my wife let me buy the tag because it was with you. I don't know if she would have with anybody else. That's Tim, how I, probably with Tim. That's how <laughs> I was able to come up this week because I've been on the road since August first. I'm like, yeah. Babe, it's a tough hunt. You know, I don't know. Boyd's going to be up there by himself, and he hurt his back. He might need some help. She said, you better go. You better go help him. If he hurt his back, haul on wood. You didn't tell her that Aaron the horse mule was coming, did you? Well, every day she asked me, did you get anything? And I'm like, I want to tell her. I'm not even hunting. I'm just the cameraman, but I can't tell her that because then I wouldn't be able to come back. So. Yeah, and she won't ever see this, right? And, yeah, she. you know what? I, I can't remember the last time she ever watched one of my episodes. I guess when I was when I was on a long trip a couple of years ago, she said that her and the kids sat down and started watching them on YouTube, and she had no idea that I did those things. I'm like, man, babe, that was four years ago, five <laughs> years ago. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't remember uh, that. She's like, you were in Oklahoma? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No kidding. You were, not, you were in I Nebraska? I did not know that you were on the Mexican border on the river. <laughs> She's like, it's so dangerous down there. Oh, that's funny. 
probably. If it was, we slept right through it. Yeah. No, so she doesn't pay a whole lot of attention to that. But So I got up here. I had a deer tag. We saw Seth and I saw a buck the one morning together or yeah. one afternoon. That was a good buck. Mm-hmm. Maybe not a great shooter, but it was a good buck. Did you get a good look at him? Because when I looked at it on the, the footage, it looked like he might have had some extras on the left side, but I didn't get a chance to put it on my laptop yet. But he's super narrow, though. He was. He had good deep forks, but, mm-hmm. you know, he was narrow, and I, I didn't. We didn't couldn't have, tell much more than that. We only had five seconds. Yeah, not a lot of time. I'll look at and it. I, I'll freeze frame it and blow it up. When the I best get part is I bumped him to you, and I thought I bumped a grouse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it run right past us. I'm a pretty smart guy like that. Well, Seth and I, when we were going up the ridge, we kept looking back. We're like, we're the we're the old we're the fat brothers, <laughs> and we're looking down, and you and Aaron are still sucking wind down in the bottom. Yeah. I'm like, that, man, Boyd must be in some pain. That, that wasn't Aaron's fault. <laughs> Yeah, normally I have to hold on to Aaron's shirt and hold him back. I was like, come on, man, slow down. No, he, he took care of me. Yeah, you were a weenie. Nah, I was a wimp. But we got up on top and saw you counted in one frame 40 elk, and that was like not even half of the Yeah, the that, that, was, that was half of one of my pitchers. There had to have been – I was figuring 70, 80 elk up there. Oh, yeah. 20 bulls. The thing, that was amazing. Everywhere. That was That was the thing that was hard is there was the one bull that was tempting – but then there was the 10 carbon copy, 280-inch six points that were just running around bugling. And yeah. It's hard to keep track of which one was the one that was the biggest. He was def- he definitely had the most inches of horn or of antler. The one I liked was the tight one. Mm-hmm. He looked a lot. You could tell he was a year or two older, tight. Yeah. Just pretty heavy, but super short time. It was weird. And I think he had the same genetics as that one that I killed yeah. like three oh, years yeah. ago because he was very narrow. But his fronts were amazing. Yeah. He had, well, he had long points all the way up and down. And, you know, he went 310 even. Well, that, yeah. Even though he's only 37 inches wide. You know, normally you think, oh, it's got to be four feet wide to get yeah. to get the, the score. But that one. Well, everybody throws around that 320 number. You know, 320 bull, 340 bull. Like, it takes a lot of inches to hit 300. And we're talking basically general. You know, this is a general unit. These elk have been hunted for a month with bows before that, and you draw the tag. It's still just a general And a rifle hunt. Yeah, it's not like it's a trophy unit by any means. So when you get when you get upwards to a 300, 320 inch bull, which I think Boyd's is going to go over 320 because of the mass and the length on his fronts, that's a lot of antler for me. You know, oh, I, I mean, I've seen you got that one 360 up in your in your upstairs, that dead head that you found. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's it's amazing to think about. You know how big a, an actual mid 300s bull is. Well, that's but. well, that's why it was hard because I just couldn't. I about pulled the trigger five times on that bull up there with Seth. I had to keep reaching yeah. up and tapping your foot because the wind was blowing so hard. I'm like hitting your foot to get your attention. <laughs> are you going to shoot? Are you going to shoot? Yeah. I'm like, are, are you going to just give me a thumbs up or thumbs down? And Seth's <laughs> over here with his rifle bared down just looking. Boyd's in front of me laid out here with his foot kicking my tripod every 10 seconds. Aaron's oh. over here moaning and groaning because he's cold. cold. I, kept, I kept hearing this. <laughs> like, Aaron, you Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like you're not gonna die on me, are you? And he's like, <laughs> he didn't even say a word. Well, I, every and every one of you are like, well, we're not gonna tell you either way to shoot or not shoot. I'm not gonna be the one that gets you to shoot a small one or a big one. I was. So I kept looking for confirmation. Everybody just like shaking their head. I oh. I did <laughs> not want to influence your hunt whatsoever, but uh, there was a lot of high fives going on when you decided not to pull that. <laughs> well, the, well, the, yeah. seven miles away yeah, from well, the truck. Like, oh yes, I'm so glad he didn't. Well, shoot. That's what's funny though is that it's amazing how. You feel good about your decision, but as the days go on mm-hmm. and you have missed opportunity and, and start wondering, because this was the only week I could be down here. Yeah. And so it's like you start second-guessing yourself. Yesterday I was thinking, I don't know if that was a good idea or not. But well, on that yeah. first morning when those guys shot that bull. Right. Right out. Right out. Oh, yeah. Let's tell it. Tell, I, cause I got parts of that story. Boyd, Boyd only gives me half truths. He like tells me parts of the story. Like Seth and Aaron saw a big buck and it was in this Canyon, I think kind of by the narrows. And I'm like, well, that Canyon's not by the narrows. So, <laughs> and then I'm like, well, I was on the wrong cause I want to gather this information cause I'm hunting this year after year. And he never tells me the whole story. Well, I just am not very smart. So I tell you wrong. Well, when we got up here Sunday, we got up here late and we just thought, well, we'll go out and, and glass, you know, see what we can find on the mountain. And Boyd was driving. Sabbath breaker. <laughs> <laughs> he after was, church. It was after church. It's okay. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Boyd's driving down from Helena, and Aaron and I split up in our different and went to different areas. And right off, I ca I catch a herd of elk coming down the hill towards some hay fields, and there's eleven bulls I think in there. So I'm texting Boyd, oh, got eleven bulls, and <laughs> and I'm an inter in like sporadic service coming from between Dillon and Idaho, and they ping in, and it's like oh, I'm about in the dark on a two lane road. Yeah, and I'm, no I'm almost wrecking trying to read these texts about five more, five more. We ended up seeing like thirty bulls that night. Just you know, we no intention of hunting them, but we went out and just found thirty bulls. Anyway, we found this group that had a pretty nice bull. I thought he would go. 320 he may be a little smaller than that but big six point big sword tines nice bull and so the next morning I went back up with Aaron and we found him again and we made a plan on him so we went up so we caught Boyd Boyd went up Boyd and I hunted Monday or you hunted Monday no, morning I, by yeah. yourself Monday so, I just went hiking behind the house just for because I did not break the Sabbath I drove on Monday good so, man yeah good man so Boyd went up that morning, and we're calling, and we we glassed that bull and some others, and we saw, I think we saw fifty bulls Monday morning. Yeah, cause and we saw we had Boyd up on a hill where he was at, and down below him, two miles, we were watching eighty elk, and anyway, kind of in a, a rotten spot, nearly impossible to get on them, but we would bedded those other those other bulls down, and so we decided that it was. Yeah, that I, was the, that was the ones we were going to go after. I I called Seth to see th how they were doing at lunch, and he's like he's like you you might come down here. We probably ought to go set up on these other ones. <laughs> you were up top, huh? That's when I yeah. talked to you. You were up on top, sleeping. Yeah, I took I took a nice nap. So we so we made a play on these, and there is a road that goes very close to where these were bedded, but we didn't want to drive it because You'd we be are plain we're like of them. yeah we the truck would be literally right within 800 yards of them mm. and so we parked clear at the bottom <laughs> two canyons over and we walked all the way from the bottom it was probably an extra oh. two miles to walk to get over there well we could see trucks down there glassing up there so we're like crap other people know about these elk but we're like they have to see us walking up the ridge yeah we walked in the wide open and that was our thinking is yeah. we're walking right into, these guys are with spotting scopes they ought to be able to see us walking up the hill and they probably did. They probably were making fun of you the whole time. Well, they, yeah. Probably. Story. The story goes on. So we got up to our to where we had our spot that we designated to glass from, and we thought would be right there, but we were a little far. But just the same, we didn't want to get any closer until they come out. We didn't know exactly where if where the patch they went in with if they had come out right there. So we sat there. We were way early. Took a nap rolled around and the wind was blowing it was that cold day so mm -hmm. that i think it only got to 32 34 degrees that day then the sun started going down we're sitting in the shade it's cold no bulls yet we're all same deal with like aaron Aaron freezing we're all because the man all, doesn't wear a coat i was like where'd aaron go and says like i think he's laying down in front of that cedar in the sun <laughs> yeah so anyway finally finally these these bulls start fil filtering out of there perfect it was it was all perfect we we did it exactly like we should have and but i guess to preface inside there we heard some trucks down below us and thought we heard a four-wheeler but it we could hear everything up on those mountains when you're up there you can hear everything down the below. farmers and everything mm -hmm. yeah the farmers are loading hay we could hear that and, and i kept walking out on the ridge so i could see if anybody's driving up and i never saw them yeah but they had they'd snuck up that road drove up that road. drove right up to the end of that road Below us. Below us. And uh, so we're sitting there, and this bull finally comes out, and we're just setting up to shoot. We're just, I mean, literally moving our backpack, putting a gun over the backpacks. I, I filmed it for a second, and then Seth said he's going to reset, and so I picked up the camera to move and in, while I was moving. Yeah, so we were, we were kind of down the hill, and we wanted to be on the ridge, so we had a good solid rest to shoot off of. So we, we wanted to move back maybe, what, 25 yards? Yeah. And so we picked up our backpacks, our spot and scopes, everything, moved to the ridge, and we just set him down. Boyd was just getting his camera. And all of a sudden, blam! Mm -hmm. What Dang. the heck? It's the shock the crap out of me because it was oh. right there. Oh, I mean, man. it was right below us. And uh, we, how we didn't see him, well, we were all just parked right into some cedars. 
and it was Bear Ridge the rest of the way, but they were just out of our eyesight. They walked right in right below us. They didn't know we were there. We went and talked to them. They said, oh, we didn't, we didn't know you were there. Wow. They came up right between us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Boyd, Boyd called, and he's like, hey, we just got, the bull just got shot right off from underneath this. Oh. I, have, I have a picture and video of it. Like, if I would have left the camera running for another 45 seconds. You'd have got the kill maybe shot. Maybe a minute I would have had the kill shot for you. Because mm -hmm. Seth just said he was moving, and Seth was moving, and I'm filming, and then I got up to move. And while I was walking towards Seth, I didn't even see it because I was walking towards Seth, and boom, and it scared the bejeebies out of me. That's public land hunting for you, though. But like I told you, I'm like, it could have gone just the other way. You, Seth could have been the one pulling the trigger. <laughs> Shooting over the top. And then you would have been the, the, the jerk, you know, that shot a bull out from underneath the kid. From know? further away than they were at. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just hard. It's fine. I mean, I, I we've hunted public land long enough to know that it, that stuff happened. That's never so dramatically happened oh, to me. Never, like, we yeah. actually – we're ready to shoot. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had it where I'm watching across the ridge, and I see somebody making a sneak, and I see him whack it, and that's cool. Yeah. But to be setting well, up like that and then, boom, <laughs> shock the crap out of you. Well, that kind of happened again on, was it Tuesday? You and I were hiking yeah, up. We yeah, we were hiking up where we knew there was a big bowl. Mm -hmm. And we see these guys going up the bottom. Well, we were just horses. talking about. We're like, well, you know, if we rim around and go up over this ridge, we were looking at the maps, the kind of the topos and everything, trying to decide how far we'd have to drop. Because we're like, if we do this, this is going to be the day. This is the the day's over. This this is yeah. going to be our hunt. And we're just trying to make that that decision. And then we saw the horses going up the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, ah, right. eh, maybe not go. I bet they're deer hunting. Mm -hmm. And then they go. Then all of a sudden, I said, Tim, they're stopping. They're getting off the horses. They're getting the spot and scope out. The one guy's setting up on a bipod. But they're right down on the bottom, so you're thinking, deer, deer. Yeah, they're not. And then yeah. we're t you were talking to the camera. I got it on film somewhere. I can't remember what we were. We were talking about maybe just leaving because they were going up the bottom or something. And then. You could hear it. Well, yeah. That made up our minds. So. But, but the funny thing is on both of them, we found out who it was later. People Seth, we knew. People Seth we grew knew. up with. Yeah, and so like that, uh, that that one with the guys on horses was an awesome seven-point bull that a guy says very good friends with that we had no idea had a tag. Yeah, and that so, was cool. I recognized his truck, and so when I got down, I was like, well, that night, I was like, hey, I think I saw you guys up there, and he's like, oh, yeah, we were up in this canyon, and I said, well, I'm pretty sure I saw your truck, and we, we saw you shoot that bull. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't see him shoot the bull, but saw him shoot, you know. And uh, oh, it's just anyway, it's cool. I sent him a text so, of the video that, or the picture we got of it. And I was like, this look familiar to you? And he's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's sitting oh, in my garage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's. It's cool that they were both people that we knew. You know, that's that's lo relic, you know, local well, guys. Well, I say the first one, I was pretty mad. And it was pretty funny <laughs> to see instantly there was two trucks barreling up through the sagebrush to come help them. And we're like, oh, wow, they've been watching this thing. They knew they were hoping that would happen. And Seth's like, I think I know whose truck that is. <laughs> and we'd, you'd talk to him that morning. He oh, told yeah. us where he'd seen yeah. a couple bulls. Yeah, we'd, we'd, shared, we'd shared a little information. And I actually had told him a couple spots that we'd been seeing him. And he'd, and he'd been seeing him. It was, probably, it was probably unwise to not tell him that I was going to go up there. <laughs> yeah. You'd tell just enough information to be dangerous, but thinking you're – not telling them and well, everything. I mean, everybody know any anybody that's doing their oh, homework I, knows where the bulls are. Oh but man, you don't really know what day what day they're gonna go do well, their we, thing, you know? Yeah. Oh, so. it's it's funny. Yeah, I want people to know that I'm seeing elk, but I don't want people to know where I'm seeing elk. Exactly. Well, see, that's that's what's funny is is my bull. You know, we Tim and I went on a ride. So Seth and Aaron went after. You didn't go after. You were elk hunting that day, and then. Tim and Jeremiah and Uncle Robin went on a long ride and, you know, got clear up on top and I was glassing and just happened to glass back 10 miles, 10 across miles the away and, and, and you could just see perfect this huge herd clear up on top of the mountain. I was like, what? Why did you even look there? Like, because where they're at, you know. Oh, it's the top of the, it's the top of the mountain. Yeah. And you're like, why? What made you out of all of the. Hundreds of miles that you can see from right here at this spot. What made you look at that spot? Because there we okay. couldn't see any elk anywhere else. Right? Well, and I don't think Robin believed me that they were there because you could no, only you could barely tell they were elk in the spot and scope. Yeah. But anyway, so then was we're so then the next so the next night when I was trying to when I 
trying to figure out where to go, I was like, well, I'm going to go see if there's anything big in that herd. And they were in the exact same spot. Mm. Crazy. Yeah. The first morning we split up, I was going to look at some behind the house and I ended up watching the back of my eyelids for a little longer than I probably <laughs> should have. And spent some time with mom and Ruben there at the house. And then oh, that, it all worked out. Wish good. I would have, would have been with you that morning, but it probably would have been good. Cause I don't think I would have hiked where you hiked. I would have given up. 40 percent up that mountain that the, the comical thing is that i thought i had to go up around that to get above them and all of a sudden i'm, just, I'm on top <laughs> like i thought i was coming out a good couple hundred feet below the top and i was like holy cow i'm on top <laughs> but it worked out perfect because they weren't where i was at where i thought they'd be they had moved around and i didn't have to go very far because I was on top, and there they were. What would have happened if you shot them on the other side? What was the other side like? It would have been painful. <laughs> it would have you been had pain- to pack them like it, a half mile to get it just to where see, you could pack a horse. I oh, that because that's the thing is I don't know the other side, and to be honest, I didn't know that side. It kills me that growing up as kids, all the time we spent in all the places, that was one spot I'd never been. I had been up there from the south side. Almost to the top, but not never yeah. on the side. The side we, you ended up going up was the way to go. But, well, it's yeah. because we always had a, a car instead of a truck. <laughs> well, see, that's what's funny. <laughs> I don't think I, people that's... know that are going to listen to this how how freaking poor we were. <laughs> <laughs> it cracks me up because I have not driven a rig up the Treed Canyon yeah. since I was a kid. And I asked Tim, I was, I was like, Tim, can I, is it an okay road? He's, He's like, like, can get I up even there? get up that Can road? I get up to that spot where you're parking without... <laughs> He's like, he laughs. He's like, it's easy. And it was funny because the instant I got there, there's that one spot that I can remember as a kid that we could not get the well, Aaron Volkswagen almost, rabbits up. Aaron almost rolled the courier at that spot. <laughs> the little red courier. Yeah. And so it kills me because I remember it being impassable, even though we made it up a couple times with the Volkswagen rabbit. And I think we even made the Volkswagen bus up there, didn't we? Uh, I never drove like, the bus, but in order to get the rabbit up there, I had to turn it around and drive it in reverse. <laughs> and so you're like getting, getting momentum to get up the hill in reverse and flying and and boy because he's so paranoid he's like let me out <laughs> well, it, well it was funny <laughs> did he really <laughs> oh i always got out <laughs> he always got out the I only mean, thing so that scared funny. him more than that were the rattler snakes yeah. <laughs> i killed two rattlers this year <laughs> so, uh, right up that little kid remind me to get those out of the freezer for you i'm pretty sure that seth's the only person on earth that knows how boyd reacts to snakes <laughs> This could be good. Oh, no. We don't need to talk about that. <clears throat> well, that's, you didn't want to hunt with me this year, then. This was the year of the snakes for me. Yeah, that's a, that's another story. <laughs> I want to hear – I want everybody else to hear the story that Seth told me up on the mountain that I didn't even know about. I thought of the same exact thing as we're driving up that road, mm-hmm. as I was driving up that road. I th- yeah, so we uh, – we like we said earlier, we rode bikes everywhere. Yeah. We used to hunt on bikes. We we I had a junkie – Old ten speed and we're talking yeah we're talking bicycles we're not talking motorbikes oh, yeah. bicycles, bicycles pedal bikes yeah. yeah and and so we so we we'd go up and just drive around Boyd had a, a pretty nice pair of binoculars I had the world's biggest piece of junk pair of binoculars yeah. you couldn't see over one ridge with them you know but we rode in and and looked for things with binos but on pedal bikes and we're, and we're coming out of that canyon. And flying down, and I and Seth and I have a tendency to quote a few mu- movies mm-hmm. every now and again. You know, a lot of one-liners that we have in our three amigos vocabulary. <laughs> but I I remember saying something, something like <laughs> I don't even remember what I said, but I remember bombing past him and saying, "You big pansy, why don't you go down this mountain like a man?" <laughs> and then I I come flying, I come, and we were going fast, but Boyd was he was rolling. <laughs> He was rolling, and we come. I come down the corner, and it wasn't 20 seconds after he flew by me. I come around the corner, and these sagebrush, they're, they're bigger they're than They're man-sized. They're trees. They're taller yeah. than the truck. And I come around the corner, and, and he is laying upside down, <laughs> his shirt stuck on his bicycle seat, bikes in the sagebrush with him, and he's laying there. <laughs> oh, oh, I think I broke something. I, I, I was completely <laughs> upside down. Right after I right after I left Seth, I go around the corner and just nail this rock, and it sends me off the road, and I can still <laughs> envision that sagebrush tree acting like a ramp <laughs> and the bike like going right up it and me flipping over back. Yeah. <laughs> 
it so was pretty epic. Did you even slow down, Seth, or did you keep going? Oh, I almost fell over backwards laughing so Oh, hard. he was dying. <laughs> I probably caused Seth to pee his pants more than once laughing. That's funny. Yeah, that was that was a fun trip, and it took him a good 10 minutes to recover from that, but we got after it after that. It's stuff like that that I wonder how we even survived childhood. I bet you there's a lot of people that had some some experiences wonder how they made it and well, now my wife won't let me go anywhere without a helmet yeah well that can <laughs> I, I remember my, my wife <laughs> won't let me get a motorbike because all the stories we'd tell i'd tell her with hanging out with eric i can still envision you know we go back to it again i can still envision my sweatpants stuck up on the bike dangling boy it still holds a grudge against me because one time i borrowed his sweatpants after we killed the deer and oh we i never gave them back he asked me if i could have them back after 10 years. Hey, you still got those sweatpants? <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't think so, they man. Were, they were hand me down <laughs> my Mackie Miner sweatpants from one of you guys. <laughs> yeah, probably from Troy because I don't remember ever wearing sweatpants. <laughs> That's all set that I wore. <laughs> oh, sorry. Fine. Sorry. I don't know how we killed deer when we were when red, we were first red sweatpants. <laughs> I know how we, we killed deer. There was 15 of us with rifles in the back of the van. <laughs> when, That's how. When we were young, when we were first started bow hunting, I thought I was the smartest kid in the world because I took those black ISU sweatpants and spray painted green and brown. <laughs> no, no, no. I totally did. I wore Boyd camouflage sweatpants for like two years. Well, you remember when the ag teacher up in Mackey got that train car full of Oh. Roach? Was it yeah. still Roach? Yeah, it was Roach, and he got all that whole train car full of like uh, government surplus stuff from one of those deals that the mm. ag teachers can go get. And there were like ten boxes of old army greens. Is that where you got all? No, your No, he used to get them out at the site. They'd go out there and buy them out at the flat. Uh, well, I the don't site. know. I don't know where he got it, but we were. I was an eighth grader. Boyd was a seventh grader. Aaron was a junior, probably with yep. you and. And he's like, oh, man, we got all these greens. What are we going to do with it? And we're thinking we're in hog heaven because <laughs> like, we got full oh. gear, full gear in, in camo. Our and old, just, the old uh, green and black army yeah. camo, whatever it was. Woodland, I don't even know what it's called. Oh, it was it's total. Woodland. The fatigues. It was uh, total old school, like yeah. 1970s army camo. What do they call that? The uh, there's a, It starts with a B. Yeah, I can't remember what they – there's a yeah. name, one of the military guys. It's the ones that they were using in Vietnam, yeah. I know that. Yeah. So they were old. But we were thinking we were in hog heaven. <laughs> old black boots. <laughs> and they gave us a few of those because he was just trying to get rid of them. Oh, and that gum. You remember the gum? I don't remember the gum. I remember the gum. Yeah, the gum. It was like it, wax. It wasn't it was, gum. It tasted like soap. <laughs> yeah, it was still gum. That, that and was like, there was like big boxes of like – juicy fruit gum and everybody in the whole school grabbed handfuls of it and then mm-hmm. we all started eating it oh <laughs> man it's horrible but it's still gum so you still chewed it of course, of course. school was <laughs> school was canceled for two weeks because <laughs> we all got food poisoning god there were some good times then man just crazy uh, stuff aaron and i we built that uh dunking booth that one year that they did that? That, yeah me and aaron and our shop class and then we were building flatbeds and, and Roach. I think Roach had something on the side going on because we were building all these <laughs> aluminum flatbeds for the ranchers and stuff. Yeah. And they just, more steel would show up and we'd crank <laughs> them out and all the flatbeds would disappear. And it's like, where are all these things going? Are we going to sell these at the end of the year or something? Nope. It was a sweatshop. We were in there welding all these, <laughs> all these flatbeds for these ranchers. Yeah, Aaron's a great welder too. He went oh, on yeah. and got a degree welding. So That's whenever cool. anything breaks down on our job site, we have to... Mm-hmm. I'm a really bad welder. I gave Jeremiah my welder. I don't know why. I had a nice wire field feed welder that I got from my wife's grandfather when he died. And mm-hmm. I just didn't have any space or use for it. And he was Jeremiah was doing a remodel there at his house in Mountain Home and yeah, we see who bummed crazy. it off of me. And now I don't got it. I'm sure you could get it. Yeah, I use knowing it. him, I, it'll show up on my. It'll be delivered by UPS someday. You know, knowing him, <laughs> all cleaned up. Yeah. Perfect condition. Wow, that, I think all these stories, that's exactly why this week was so awesome, being down here, because I haven't hunted down here since for since I moved to Montana. So it was just, I think that's truly what made it so good. That's why I went hiking where I did opening, or, you know, Monday morning, just for all those memories and thought of that, because that was a canyon of the bike incident. And to me, that's what this week's been about, yeah. doing, hiking the hills we grew up hiking and going on some hunts with Seth and Aaron and Tim and going on a ride with Jeremiah and Robin because that's, that's 
Yeah. That's our childhood. It was our childhood reenacted only first for the first time I actually had an elk rifle up to it. Well, I've been able to get over the year, the last several years, I've been able to get bits and pieces. You know, you and I have gone on a few hunts and, and Seth and I have hunted a little bit with Aaron and that. Um, but this is, this Robin and I were talking up on the mountain. Robin's our uncle. He's the one that I remember as a kid, when we first started getting into bow hunting, Robin, even though he was poor too, he always had the coolest hunting gear, I thought. And I remember going in his back room in there with the fireplace as you go in. And he always had his hunting gear strung out in there because he didn't want it in the house. And this, and I just remember always thinking, oh, Robin's got the coolest stuff. I just want to go see his hunting stuff, you know. That's and thinking funny. back on it, there's probably nothing really special, but it was just yeah. one of those things that the sights and the smells and the feeling and everything just really ingrained into you. That's funny because I forgot about that because I always, when I think of archery and hunting, I always think of his back room. And Carl's basement. Carl's basement and Jerry Bohay's archery shop. Yeah. Yeah. In the basement of his house. Yeah. We but we all bought our bows first bow. Well, you bought Zach's Zach's personal bow as your first bow. And then Jerry, Jeremiah and I bought the Polaris bows from yep. Jerry. Yep. Well, Jeremiah got the Polaris Express because he yeah. had to be better than us. Well, he, he was. <laughs> he was. I, st- I was trying to think back because I, I was – Mom, that bow's still at the house. But I was trying to think if I ever killed anything with that bow. And I don't – I know I've drawn blood a lot with that bow. <laughs> but I don't think I have ever actually killed right and recovered <laughs> yeah, uh, anything with that bow. That's funny. Well, and Aaron bought that. That Oneida. That, no, that was before that he bought that one with the four wheels. Do you remember? That old, old thing. The brown oh. or the browning one? Yeah, he killed that. He killed that first elk with that old thing. That ancient. I forgot about of days. That. Well, it what was the one you had? It was a browning, wasn't it? No, the I had an old bear whitetail, too. That was the first oh. bow I got. And it had the four wheels. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, but I know which one you're talking to Aaron had. Yeah, and, we, and that thing wasn't powerful enough, so we read... We read some article on one of those outdoor life postings, and and it said, "Oh, well, if you want to make it more powerful, you stick some rubber pads in underneath the lens <laughs> of the riser." So we that's smart. We found two rubber pads that the hard rubber and stuck it in there. I couldn't even pull the thing back. Aaron could get it back. <laughs> and <laughs> you that shoot first through elk, a cow. And and you know what? No sights. Yeah, and I don't. He, I didn't and, put sights on until two thousand and. Well, you had them on. I still remember the day that you said, I wonder if I could hit that instinctive. Well, I started with sights on, and then I took them off. Yeah, but, yeah, before hunting season. Yeah. Because we were shooting all summer, and I can still remember Tim saying, I wonder if we could do it like Barry Wenzel. Because we watched that video. where Bow hunting October whitetails. Yep. He talked to the guy guy into shooting instinctive with his compound, and, of course, we all shot fingers then. Well, so I can still remember the day Tim's like, I'm going to take my sight off. And then he pinwheeled our target at 40 yards. Oh. And we're like, he, after shooting one day, we all took our sights off. Yeah, because it was so much more fun. And, like, yeah. we were accurate probably because we had those targets memorized every step of the way. And, but just instinctively, we had shot so much at that time that I could walk, literally walk out the back door, grab the bow, walk around the corner, arrow it. And from 60 yeah. yards at an angle, we had this deer silhouette cut out of carpet on the haystack. And you like first you're looking to make sure that nobody's out there feeding cows or anything, and then you're like, boom! <laughs> Sorry, Dad. And I remember the first shot every time, money, and you can just still see that arrow hit that sh- that shredded carpet right in the perfect spot, and just the confidence that it gave you, like, I'm gonna be a stinking killer, man. This is awesome. Ben but Pierce. then you get out there, <laughs> but then you get out there and see an animal and shoot oh, right over his gosh. back. Yeah. I was out with Brett one year and uh, Brett Gamut. And I didn't have sights on that bow, and Brett had, Brett had his first compound bow. And we called in a little bull up one of the canyons there. There was three, three bulls, and I shot at the first one at like 13 yards, and it just skipped right off the top of its back. And then that Brett kept calling, and I remember thinking I wanted to sneak up, and he was going to go this way around the ridge, and I was going to go the other way. And, I'm, and I remember thinking to myself selfishly, I was like, well, I'm going to go down the middle of the ridge, and that way I can get the shot first. I don't think <laughs> Brett knows that. So I go down the top and that friendship's over. Yeah, friendship. No wonder he didn't call me this year. <laughs> no. But we both emptied our quivers even to the point where he was going and picking up arrows and then shooting them again. <laughs> like what, a hundred yards or what? No, we're talking like thirty yards. I mean he probably at the end of it, by the time we were just desperate and just laughing, you know, we were it was probably out there, sixty, seventy yards at that point. 
unethical bugger. Well, yeah. We're kids. What do, what do kids know? You know, nobody. We we grew up feral with, as far as that goes. We didn't have any mentors telling us what what was good and what was bad. It was you know, make them bleed, <laughs> shoot yeah. an arrow at them. It, uh, Aaron and I had and Boyd had this conversation when we were walking up on that first bull. How we didn't have we didn't have a dad to no. Not I mean your dad didn't really care about that sort of thing. My dad was gone, yeah. and so we made our own way. We didn't have anybody to show us. We didn't have anybody to teach us how to to hunt proper and we had to learn it carl kind of got us lined out and then i think he got annoyed by all of us he 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 liked <laughs> jeremiah okay but i think he got annoyed by me and boyd and then robin he never had much time and he always you know had ben to take out and i think robin got annoyed of us real quick but uh he he <laughs> he, he always wanted us to go with him he did into the back country yeah that's just because he wanted somebody to help him pack out this elk you know it goes back to that slave labor thing that's what <laughs> it goes back to yeah no but they're just but really um i think that's part of what makes you as effective as you are is you had kind of jeremiah and i to kind of light the fire and we we learned a lot of things but like you were just natural with it you just took it and ran and we we all taught ourselves i think that's kind of what Oh, makes it yeah. fun you know most definitely that was the day seth and i drove back with the old dooley with those bucks in the back oh man bigger than any bucks our brothers had killed we thought we were kings i don't i still don't think i've killed a buck that big <laughs> no. well not as big as seth Seth's yeah was that big. was an amazing buck wasn't it yeah and seth, seth uh, we'll, let's, we'll also preface here that seth's always been a better shot than me yeah. <laughs> and on that one when i saw that buck seth couldn't see it I kept saying, shoot it, shoot it, Seth, shoot it. And he's like, you shoot it. And I was like, I'll miss, you shoot it. I can't see it. Where is it? It's, I was like, it's the, it's the thing with the tree growing off its head. I mean, I didn't have a scope. Did you yeah, have a scope you, on that? No, gun? you had a. No, you, you guys were your, both open sights. Yeah, you had your open sighted OT6, and I think that I old had. military thing, I 1917. Think I had Tim's pump. You had the pump 3030. It, it might have had a scope on no, it. No, I think I had your old pump OT6 you bought. Yeah, you did, because yeah. you jammed it. Yeah. And I had to borrow you my gun. While I was trying yeah. to get yours unjammed. I bought that, that from uh, uh, Bart Wanstrom. I bought that rifle from Bart yeah, Wanstrom, but, I think. But Seth's, Seth's always been the shot, so that's why, you know, even this week we, he, he kind of chuckled because Seth might have helped me finish that one off in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say stuff like that. <laughs> okay. So Nobody anyway. needs to know the truth. Okay. Okay. Needs so, to know Seth, the truth. So, so Seth, just to stab me. I think week. the statute of limitations is over on that. I think you're okay. <laughs> just the stab. I, I remember, just shoot, Seth. Just shoot. I can't hit him. You know, because I hit him and he went down, but he was like mm. going over the shale shoot and just about ready to get Oh, gone. you guys are on the top of the world up there. Oh, yeah. 10,000 feet. Like, just, just start. Just shoot, Seth. <laughs> I pulled anyway. up and dead run that thing over the hill, shot it right in the back of the head. That was a lucky shot. <laughs> that's why it looks so big. <laughs> ah, that's right. But then, so just to stab me last week when we we're talking plans for this week, Seth's like, yeah, I just hope I don't have to help you finish it <laughs> off. <laughs> and so yesterday as I'm blasting away, we're Seth. Dang it, we're Seth. <laughs> Those guys that I met down at the bottom said there was some shooting going on up there. No, there wasn't. They were they were, they were, were hearing things. Yeah. They, they, I thought they said that there were three or four guys up there shooting. <laughs> it probably, yeah, no, 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 no. No, it wasn't that bad. Every hunt I've been on with you, whether it was with a bow or a gun, you had to give it a few warning shots. The bow, I uh, usually I don't give them a warning shot with the bow. But well, usually you're so paranoid, you just keep throwing arrows at them. That's why it them. looks. That's why it looks that way with the bow. You know, but I usually hit them the first shot. Yeah. I just keep them flying. But the, I did miss yesterday. I'll, I'll I'll say I missed, but it was kind of ironic because I kind of rushed the shot just a little bit. They they heard me in the crunchy snow and. They were kind of getting antsy, and there was 60, 70 elk in the herd. And so I, I could see where I could go back around the ridge and come out on some dry sagebrush and get what I thought would be about 250 from them. But I hurried and did it, and I got there, and I ranged them right at 300. And they're kind of antsy on the edge, and that bull was just about ready to go off into the other mm -hmm. canyon. And I, I'm confident I would never seen him again. Mm -hmm. So I was hurrying and trying to get set up, and by intervention, he, he stood there long enough. But... I must. Have, I don't know where I sailed, <laughs> but but it's hard because you're waiting for all the cows to clear, and they finally all clear, and he's there, and I I close it off, and I was just sick because he didn't move, 
And then I was just sick because I couldn't see them and they're all bunched up. And then all of a sudden they all started walking back up the hill towards me and back up over to where I'd come from, which is where I needed them to go. So it was a, it really was a blessing because it made it, they got over to where we could get the horses. Yeah. I don't know where we would have come from on the other but side. It was, but it was like, if he would have just went 20 feet off the edge and they would have went that way, I, I don't think I would have, cause they would have been in the timber and mm -hmm. it'd have been a poop shoot after that. Of course it ended up being a... <laughs> quite the rodeo up there in the cliffs because that's what's funny is i didn't know if i hadn't been up there when i ran back around to get on them i was like where are they and i was like well that's cliff they can't go there so i turned around and there's three cows here and and so i'm running down and i just thought they were going in slow motion but they were going in slow motion because it was cliffy and shale and anyway so how high do you think you were up there I don't know how high that. It's got to be ten. I didn't look at the. I think that that it's got to be ten. Peak is is just shy of ten. I want to say. Yeah. And you I'll right have to up to the top of it. I was on right top. Under it, yeah. I was on top. <clears throat> well, but when I then I get up there to help him pack it out, there's a whole nother story of how how he got a hold of Jeremiah and I. You know, he shouldn't have because I was I was two minutes away from being out of cell coverage for the rest of the day. Jeremiah had already left and then came back to get his phone. Left his phone at the house mom's house and had to come back but um i got up there and i'm like hey, where's the heart and the liver and he's like it's still up in the carcass he's like if you want it it's yours so i i went up to the carcass and yeah. so i'm digging out the heart and the liver and there's not a pump not are one you really hole gonna in the tell chest this? Cavity, are you so. really gonna tell this story <laughs> i didn't see one puncture are you hole really in that chest gonna cavity. Tell this? i'm like he hit this thing everywhere but the vitals <laughs> I expected it's to like, see the heart all blown up. I pull it out. It's perfect. I'm like, oh, this is sweet. And I pull out the hey, liver. It's perfect. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> there might have been some I lung tissue that got a little bit of damage to it. <laughs> That's a pretty low blow, man. <laughs> well, you didn't put me in as part of your so group I, hunt on this hunt, so I'm a little bitter about it. So I, I had to pack the meat down about 80 yards off the shale slide. Right. And so when I'd get a cut, I'd carry it down there. And I even thought, I thought, oh, this is good. They won't look at the carcass. <laughs> And so he says he wants to go get the heart. I was like, uh, uh, I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I drug it off the edge. Because I thought I saw one far back in the long oh, area. Was. but There was probably. But there there wasn't anywhere that they should have been. <laughs> uh, well, you got him. He went down, and we're all going to enjoy it. Some serious buck fever. Is that what you did? Well, it, it really was a neat experience because everything worked out perfect to where he came over where we could get him with the horses. Right. It, 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 I, I, I remembered that I had a couple of bars of service when I was out on the top on the one ridge. So as I'm getting him all ready, I'm just thinking, man, this is going to be brutal the next three days trying to get this guy off here. Cause I thought Jeremiah had left with the horses. Mm -hmm. And so then I was like, you know, I got him tagged, took a couple pictures, put the tag on him. And I was like, I got to go try and get a hold of Seth and Tim. And so I hiked over to the ridge where I had had the bars, and it showed I had two, three bars, but nothing would go through. It kept saying air, air. I tried calling Seth. I tried calling Tim. Nothing would go through. Nothing would go through. It finally went through once for Tim, mm -hmm. but it went, it dropped right I off. I answered it, and it was just gone. Yeah. It dropped right off, and I'm just kind of panicking, thinking, man, I hope I get a hold of him. And then, and then the thought crossed my mind, well, try Jeremiah. And so I, because he could call you guys, so I tried Jeremiah, and he picked up first time. It started ringing instantly, and he picked up, and I was, and I just talked as fast as I could to tell him where I was at and everything. And he said, "We were just leaving town. Well, we well, can come get you." And he's like, "I'll get Reuben." And, and then I cut out again, but he knew enough to know where to get me. And I was trying to call him more to make sure he did know where mm -hmm. I was. But then after another ten minutes of trying, it went through again, and it was just like, it was, it, it 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 truly was almost emotional because it's like, wow. I've been trying for a half an hour, and I, and I got Jeremiah, who has the horses. Well, he had left. I mean, Seth's got Aaron. Yeah, but, we have the horse. <laughs> yeah. but, the mule. but Jeremiah has, <laughs> has horses. But Jeremiah left. That's what's crazy is he left, and I was still at the house gathering my things, getting ready to leave. And then he was down past the corner. He backed up his horse trailer a quarter of a mile back because because otherwise he would have had to drive all the way around the block and come so he backed it up to the house reuben came in and grabbed his phone and went out and then that's he when he called because he wouldn't have had his phone then and i was walking out the door and leaving to go hunt somewhere else and then when jeremiah got a hold of me i was literally down the road and if you go around that corner you lose service you know i was two yeah. minutes away from losing service when jeremiah got me yeah. so it was just a lot of luck and a lot of uh 
A lot of tender mercies. A lot mercies. of awesomeness involved. Tender mercies. Because I, I say I, it, it, I did. I got a little emotional because it was like everything worked out to where this week was just a dream. And we were, it just worked out awesome. And then being in all those elk that we've been in, that's <laughs> yeah, bonus. It's been a long time since I've been like in the middle. Every opportunity we ever wanted to shoot something, yeah, you know. We I passed, mean, I haven't taken one yet, but every opportunity. Yeah. No, so. I, I got think I passed a shot every day, yep. except for yesterday. I didn't pass. I just I made up for the other days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that was for the first one. <laughs> So you actually could have shot all four elk that you passed this week. <laughs> with, the, with as many bullets as you threw, and, you could have shot every and, elk you passed. And maybe a couple more. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. I, no one will ever know. No, it was a fun week. I'm glad. I'm glad but I was it, able to come up and Seth and Aaron could be here too. That was fun. Oh, it, this was just a memorable week. Yeah. Just awesome. So when are we going to do it again? Next year. Well, I can't put in for bowl, but I think. Well, is there a waiting list on this once you draw? Yeah, every yeah, other. Every uh, other. For antlers. Well, we're getting those mules all. You're getting, you're just getting yours yeah. broke now, but mine are well on their way. Well, yeah. see, that that's so. what, that's what hit me the most this trip is, is I've been excited to have the mules and stuff, but I still like to hunt on foot a lot just because like where I was at there, it just worked out perfect. But it, it got me excited, but it also reminded me how good a packer Jeremiah is. Mm-hmm. That was impressive. I would have bet a hundred dollar crisp hundred dollar bill that that rack was going to come off. Oh man, I was nervous. I was nervous. We had to come down a slide, but anyway, it, it's gotten me so excited to work on the mules and go on a couple summer trips with Jeremiah. And, and well, I think the biggest thing I realized is these are mean mountains, and I'm getting yeah. old. Mm. Yeah, and I. Right now, I'm You hurting. are getting old. I am. Yeah. But I'm hurting. I mean, <laughs> I hurt from the end of my toe right up to my ears, and I am not joking. Well, you know, I was packing. I packed my camera, too, to hoping to get some video. And with the camera, I, I props to Tim. That's oh. without even. It's easy. Well, Tim Tim comes up there, and the first thing he sa- says, you you didn't get it on film, did you? <laughs> he I'm was sure like you telling, didn't get it on the film, but did you? Uh, but did I'm, you? I'm sure you did, and I was like, well, I filmed after. That's yeah. a gun hunt for crap, but i like, no, I know how it's, it is. It's, well, that, I don't know how you do it because when I, I saw those bulls and I went, I was like, okay, I'm going to go check and see how big he is, and there's a truck park there, and you get all nervous and apprehensive, and so you start hiking as fast as you can, and then you look down, and there's three trucks mm-hmm. somewhere else glassing. Yeah. And so I literally was just – cooking it up that mountain because i wanted them to see that i was going after them you but wanted I, them but to see that you were that better I was, than they that were. i was you that i was doing like the guy on monday and taking one out from under him <laughs> but i but i but i also <laughs> i also wanted them i knew the best way to come at it was to go around the hill and up over the top on them All right but i also thought if i go up over that ridge and around there they're gonna think i didn't even see the elk and i bet they kind of thought that because it because i went way farther than the normal person would have thought to but it worked out good but you're probably about done done whacking done what hacking L- listen, just hack up listening. along just now listening to us we've been blabbing long enough sure, no it's more sure that i just week. want to get on the road and go home and see my family that yeah we could get i guarantee we could get us three and jeremiah and aaron in the room and we could talk nonstop for a week of well. just re reliving stories and no, it, it just life is good. Life is good. Fun memories, and it's good. Good to keep positive and oh, keep yeah. having fun. Uh, nothing but good times in front of us too. Yeah, except for Seth's we, getting old. Yeah, yeah he just. I'm it. younger than you, but <laughs> old, definitely older than Boyd. Oh, but now the kids are getting to that age older. now. Yeah. That's that's what I I worry about is crap. My kids are just loving, starting to love hunting. I got my they're. My oldest are girls, but they're, I you know, we've got them into some nice animals already, and they've got some killing, and have kind of gotten the fever. Yeah. And so it's it's been fun, but man, if I can't, I don't know if I can't I, pound the mountain. I don't, I don't know, know if I can even talk to your daughters anymore because they, they pretty much deer. shot a bigger deer than me every year the last five. <laughs> yeah, we love to deer hunt. That's a, this. Mm. Is, well, that's the thing about elk hunting and deer hunting is if you don't bow hunt, then you don't get an every year opportunity. You know. And so, but deer hunting where you can deer hunt every year. No, it's good it's, medicine. 
Yeah. No, oh, cool. been a great week. Thanks for coming up, guys. No, thank you, guys. To spend time with this old geezer. I appreciate you sitting and I hope, through. I hope you nail a big one next week. Yeah. You are you back. coming back? When are you coming back? Not probably middle of next week, probably. No. The deer season goes till the middle, and so I figured if I waited, I was, I, I'm a claustrophobic kind of guy. I don't like to have people all around me. Yeah, so. Uh, that's what I tell everybody. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what it's like to be a weekend warrior because I hunt because I can. I hunt Monday through Friday. Yeah. You know, just like last night coming out of that canyon, every truck, there was a dozen was trucks a going in there. Up. Truck and trailer, truck and trailer, truck and trailer. Yeah. There was a bunch know. headed up last night. So I was, I, I'm so glad I got it done yesterday. So we come down the hill about three o'clock, and so we could see that road going mm-hmm. up in there, the whole walk down. You probably saw a lot that we didn't see because yeah, we were still I've, up there. I was telling Aaron, look at all those cars, 25, 30 cars coming up, wow. or trucks wow. coming up. And I was like, where are they all going to hunt? Well, that that's why it, was, it really was cool seeing all the locals get her done yeah. on the ones we were watching. Of course, of course, I say it, locals. My truck's the only Montana license <laughs> plate. So I, was, I was afraid that I was going to come back with a nasty gram in it or slash Well, tires. you're Montana and mine are Nevada, so. Yeah. Every, when I get back to my truck, first thing I do is make sure they're still around. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a walk around because because I was like, everybody saw me up here. They're probably going to be ticked. No. Some moron from Montana. <laughs> what they don't know is we're more local than they are. Yeah, yeah. That's and that's the thing. Most of these guys have been doing this a long time. They're, I mean, you don't put in for well, a unit like this if you don't if you've never. If hunted you don't here. have well, some connection with it, yeah. you really and that's don't. why you have to be patient and. Not yeah. get all bent out of shape if somebody beat you to a trailhead or beat you to a bowl. Because how many times have we done that to others? I mean, we know? went right down and we went and congratulated those guys, and yeah, that was a good shot the kid made on that one oh, bowl. He just knocked it right over. And well, that's a, that's the other part of the story. Is again, Seth's like, you want to shoot him? I was like, I can't hit him from here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad that kid actually got him because I would have yeah. just been blasting away and they'd, everybody been mad at me. You would have just <laughs> chased him farther up the canyon. Yeah. I'm going to go shoot. I, I decided, because I'm better with my guns, my guns that I've hunted with my whole life. Mm. I think I'm just going to take that gun and whack a few coyotes this year and get more comfortable with that MOA. It's a good gun. It's a good gun. I'm just not, it's not the same as pulling up my 270 that I've had since high school. It's weird. Just something weighted a little bit different. Is, it is. is like my, my you know? 270 from high school, I feel like I can pop anything. After I give it a one warning shot, no. <laughs> or two. No, usually that we usually usually everything I've killed with that two seventy, I've given it one. Warning. <laughs> Almost everything I've given it one warning shot. And the problem is, you it's a short mag, so you've only got three. Well, that's that. That's the thing is, every time I am shooting that MOA, it's like, oh crap, already. <laughs> My As the elk empty. is running up over the yeah. hill, you're like, oh, I'm shoving bullets <laughs> down in the magazine. Well, that, that was the – as he was going top in the hill, I think that's the one that I started the caping process. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough of that story. All right. Well, we'll leave it at that. We've hit here about an hour. That's, All right. That's, that's longer than we thought we were going to do. Thanks, yeah, guys. we better go. Appreciate it. You're good, man. All right. You got to have a story. No, forget the story. Everybody's doing something. We'll do nothing. They say, what's your show about? I say nothing. There you go. It's about nothing. I think you may have something here.